you mentioned your relationship with Robin. You had a good relationship, but still, that was a that was a core group of guys that had been together a while. Oh, absolutely. I mean, had won a lot of races. Mm-hmm. Was there ever any pushback from the veterans on the team to you being the new guy and coming in and oh, yeah. saying, okay, this is what – Oh, yeah. What, yeah. what did you – They handled it okay, but when you heard the backlash from it, it was – Kind of ugly, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, um, Mike Beam, Steve Mill, um, uh, uh, he was a crew chief for a little bit. Oh, I can't remember his name. Um, he'd been there forever, and he was back doing work in the shop. Yeah, I could see that. I don't think Robin did. Yeah. I think him and I were pretty straight up. We, we had an issue. We'd talk to each other. The other guys, they just – Tony Glovers and stuff, you just go, man, I wish they hadn't said that. I'm just trying to get by and make a living, you know what I mean, enjoy this thing. And, yeah, it rubbed them wrong. And then when you do run good, I think it even rubbed them wronger, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and that's my opinion on that, right. you know. Yeah. So you go to Talladega, and, again, I was reading in your book, you put an air hose in the gas can. <laughs> um, what was that designed to do? Well, just now you're talking about the gas can, like yeah, that hose okay. right there. Okay, that's a restriction on how fast the gas comes under that can, that hose. If you make that a quarter inch bigger, it will empty the tank quicker. <laughs> Eric Horn, just a good good friend of mine, he I hired him because Richard came to me and said, "Do you know anybody who can change a tire and help us?" And I said, "Absolutely." This guy from back in Washington State, Eric Horn. He can do it all. Didn't he wind up at Robert Yates? Yes, for okay, years. Okay, yes. Well, that's, uh, I knew that. Big E. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful person. Yeah. But <laughs> he couldn't change a tire. <laughs> but anyways, I talked Richard into hiring him, so old Eric moved down here with him, him and his wife, and oh, my God, it was a big commitment for him, and, and it's kind of an iffy deal with him, so – so, anyways, I'd stay at nights and we'd practice with Eric Horn to get, so he could learn how to change the tire real good. Anyways, he got pretty good at it, I'm good at it. And he actually changed tires for Robert Yates for years until his back gave him trouble. Anyways, in the gas can, I had this idea if we just put a little air in the tank, it would really empty the tank quickly, just shoot it out, you know. So, Eric and I, only two people that knew that whole deal, we at nights we'd go back and we'd fill these gas cans up with water and we'd time them to see how much we could, how much air we could get by without blowing the tank up. But at the same time, that's important. Yeah, yeah. that's kind of important. <laughs> so, we had it all figured out. And uh, so, last stop at Talladega, we were, I think, run third. And I'm thinking, if we can get this thing off pit road, because back then you didn't change tires. Yeah. The, at Talladega, the tires were so hard that you just run them longer, they work better. So last stop, I grabbed that old arrow and I stuck it up in my pant leg and pulled up my shirt like this, you know, and just, <laughs> and then old George, big George was gas man on, pe- on Petty Scar. Uh, Carmody, George Carmody, I think. And uh, anyways, I said, okay, pit this time, Richard. And he comes down pit road, and I said, I'm going to help you, Jordan. He says, I got it, I got it. And I said, no, no, i got to help you, you know. So so I'm on the back side of him, and the air hose up my hand like this, and I just stick it up the air on the vent and just, you know, and it just, all of that tank just in three and a half seconds, it was gone. And I, so I go, I said, uh, okay, go, 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 go. You know, and Richard, he's cussing me on the radio. He said, you didn't get enough gas in this. And I said, you're good, you're good. And he said, there ain't no way. He says, and he's been around. He's made a few pit stops. He knows how long it takes to put a, a, ga- a tank of gas in it. But anyway, we got it in there and won the race. So that was pretty cool. <laughs> you had the chance to go back to Victoria that year with Bobby Allison. Mm on his plane that evidently was quite the adventure oh wonderful wonderful man just working for petty as a crew chief bobby allison calls you and says hey we're going back to your hometown do you want to go that kind of explains the deal you know i mean it's not you're not into this deal for nothing but just to try to do the best you can everything you do so i called maurice and i said listen you know 
Bobby Allison asked me to go race with him this week. Can I go? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, as long as you're back by such and such. And I said, okay. So we flew out there. We opened up, I think, two malls. He run three nights, a dirt track, Yakima Speedway, and another race. Flew the plane. Wake you up in the morning at 6 o'clock because he had to go. He, it was amazing how he how he could do that and then and, and race a race and get out, chat with the people, sign autographs, talk, you know. You know, I love Bobby Allison. He's just him and Judy and Gary Nelson and Gary's wife went and myself that for the whole three, four days we've got. So, so we get done. We flew out of a place called Yuma, Washington, a little old airstrip to get out of Yakima, Washington. And we all had our coffee, you know, we get on the plane and we got to go. We got time. We got to go, you know, so we're on the plane. And, I, and uh, so I said, oh, well, hang on a second. I'll drink. I'll just drink this coffee. And he, she goes, no, Judy was sitting there. And she goes, no, no, it's all right. I just hold coffee. And he, so he starts climbing and all of a sudden he says, uh, I'm going to do a roll. And I said, okay, well, hang on. I'm going to definitely drink my coffee now. And Judy says, it's all right. So he does that roll, you know, barrel roll in that plane and, and he does it. Like that, so the the gravity's going up. Yeah. Coffee just sitting there, perfect as ever, you know. <laughs> but uh, he was amazing. We flew into Birmingham or wherever the plant, the air station was by hit by what was the name of um, Uy Town? Uy yeah. Town. Yeah. 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 So we go in there. I am dog tired. I'm and yeah. all I've been doing is hanging out with them for three days. I mean, you know, just I'm junk. I'm so, anyways. We land there uh, Monday morning, real early, in Uy Town, Alabama, and I, I got to get back to work because I got to go back to work at Petty's Monday yeah. morning. Yeah. So called Maurice. I said, "Man, I'm gonna be a little bit late." And he says, "Well, get when you get get here when you can." I said, "Okay." So I get in my old truck, driving up through Atlanta. There's road construction, and I'm just nodding. Next, yeah. <laughs> and anyway, I guess the traffic stopped for the construction. And I fell asleep, and I drove off the road and hit oh, into a, wow. and just just rolled slowly into a, yeah. a gravel pile. And I, next thing I remember, somebody's knocking at the window. One of the workers and says, "You okay?" <laughs> I said, "Oh yeah, yeah." <laughs> wow, wow! <laughs> but you just did it, you know. Yeah. You just you yeah. just love to do it. All right, Charlotte that fall. Um, what happened? Take me, take me through Straight the straight goods. Um, We've been beat a couple, three times that year with the left size on right. Mm -hmm. We knew that. Yeah. So late in the race, we, we run pretty good. We were running really good. I don't know if we could have won it without them, but we were running good. And on the last two stops, some of the other guys were coming by, asked for tires. You got any left size left? You know, we're out of tires. So I said, hmm. So I, Randy Cox was our tire guy. Super neat kid. I says, air them left sides up to right side pressures. What? I said, just do it. Just measure them up and see if you can get that. Okay. So he did. Last stop come down. I says, if we're going to do it, we got to do it now. Because I knew Richmond, he would do it. Kale would do it. And and uh, Daryl would do it in a heartbeat. And that's the guy we were running with. So, so I says, air them up. So last stop come down there. And I lift them tire, put them on the wall. You know, Robin, he was changing the front tire, and I was changing the back. And he looked at me, he says, <laughs> left side. And I says, like that. And he said, no, left side. And I said, we're good. So let's come in there and put them on. And he went out there and and uh, come back up the back straight. And I said, okay, Richard. I said, this is, this is a pretty good set of tires here. I said, just, uh, just look after them for a little bit. You know, didn't want to run them hard. Cause I think we had 18, 20 laps to go, something like that. And I says, they're, they're real good, so just just be careful. Oh, okay, okay, 10-4, 10-4. You know, he had his old rag, and all you can hardly understand him. So he gets up there, and he catches Walter and just <laughs> blows by him. And he's, that gummy. <laughs> These are a good set of tires. <laughs> so we won that deal. So anyways, coming down Pitt Road, going to Victory Lane, I just run up the window and took the window that down. I, he says, what would you do on that last stop? And I says, I put lefts on the right. And he says, okay, well, I, I, I wondered. And I says, 
And his exact words to me, he said, if we can't get by with two left tires, there's something wrong. And I said, well, that's, that's the way I looked at it. I'm sorry, but that's, I just made the call. He said, no, no, you did good. You did good. So we go in victory lane, and here comes NASCAR with the, with the air gauges. I guess if we put left sides on wrong, they'd be aired wrong. But if they were aired for the right, yeah. <laughs> it was correct. Yeah. So they come in there, and they checked them, and they didn't say on the course. So we go through all the victory celebrations and, and uh, go through tech. You know, you got to go tear down. So we're going through tear down, and, and I had to go to Goodyear and get that tire deal looked after, blah, blah, blah. You know, just all the stuff you do, just getting ready to go. So anyways, I go to the motor guys, the motor room or that little tech area, and I says, Maurice was there, Kenny Wilson was there, Richard wasn't there, he was up top. And I says, uh, how's it going? He says, oh, we're going to let it cool down a little bit. And I says, a little bit big? Yeah, a little bit, he says. And I says, okay, well, we got a lot to do. Let's, let's Come on, let's hurry this up, you know. And he says, okay. So Maurice and Kenny Wilson both said, well, wow, we're just going to let it cool down a little bit. I said, okay, I had some more stuff to do, so I went and got come back and they're still not there and I says what's going on here in other words I did not know the motor was big you did not I did not really yeah because yeah it's because Richard said <laughs> when he come down with the press booth and they said uh, uh, and they said uh, Richard the motors uh, they told us in the garage paddock area they said Richard the, the thing's a 388 or something and Richard he just he I I know for a fact he didn't know. I just got that in my heart because he'd been complaining about the motors wouldn't run, and I guess old Chief and Kenny yeah. Wilson said, "Well, by God, we'll give him a motor to run." <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think Richard knew about it. I, I really don't. What was life like back at the shop after that that following week? It was as normal. It really was. was it? Richard called me. He says, come on in the office. So, and Richard's my hero. He is, he's the man. He, he presents himself properly. He says the right things. He's the man, in my opinion. He earned the word king, I'm telling you. Yeah. And he says, uh, he says, what am I going to do here, Larry? And I said, what do you mean? He says, well, they, they're going to find us $35,000 and and then back in the day, that that's a lot of money. And he says, I just don't know what I'm going to do. And I said, this is what I do, Richard. <laughs> You're asking me. Yeah. <laughs> Get yeah. from Canada. What does Richard <laughs> pay? And I says, Richard, what I do, I said, is I would decline that win. I'd say, I've never won a race like this. I ain't taking it like this. And I said, it'd make you a hero. You know what I mean? I just, it would just absolutely delete any idea that you ever cheated to win a race. Because this one here, they got us on. And he thought about it, but he didn't didn't go that way. So yeah, 